we, we need to like introduce first, I guess, to everyone who's Yeah, watching. like I was gonna ask you already. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. oh, okay. You can go first. Hi everyone, my name is Cynthia Yin and I am from Los Angeles and this is my first year at the Tsinghua GBJ program. Okay, and um, hi everyone, my name is Shar and I'm from the Philippines. Kind of like the same with Cynthia, it's my first year here as well in Tsinghua GBJ program. Um, I guess I could um, start us with the question like why you decided to come to Tsinghua? So I came to Tsinghua because I really wanted to experience what it would be like to study at a Chinese university and I spent a large amount of my time in America but I had the idea of possibly working in China in the future because my family currently, my parents at least, currently live in China and I had some experience growing up in China during my middle school and high school years so I really wanted to be back in this Chinese environment and I wanted to pivot into a communications field as well so I decided that the Tsinghua GBJ program would be perfect for both my career needs and also for me to learn more about um, the Chinese working environment, study environment, etc. Yeah. Okay, um, before I answer the question, I just like have a small follow-up to that. You said like pivot to communication field, right? Yes. What do you mean by that? Like did you not study um, communication in your undergrad? Yeah, so uh, a, kind of like a fun fact is that I studied biology in my undergraduate career because I originally intended to go into medical school, but after trying out different internships, I got the opportunity to do PR for my um, college dance team, and I enjoyed that experience so much. I dived into the PR field, and I got an internship in fashion PR and another um, internship in lifestyle product PR. And I really wanted to pursue communications as a future career, but I felt like I didn't have the basic knowledge or foundational knowledge that I needed. So I wanted to supplement my experience with an official degree in communications. And that was the pivot that I made. That is so interesting. I guess my answer to that is not that is interesting because, you know, in China, well, I've been here in China for um, five years now. This is like my sixth year. And once you start a job in China, you, you're stuck there. Like it's very hard to apply to another um, position without prior experience. So I guess like why I came to GBJ in the program is that I see that as a career changer. Like I see it as a tool for me to change to another position in the, um, in the field where I want to be. Like I actually want to handle social media. Now I want to handle, um, I want to be a social media handler or a social media manager that because I, like in my previous company, I had this um, small team that handles our um, company's social media account like TikTok, YouTube, Facebook. And I felt that I achieved all the goals that were set for me in such a limited amount of time. And I felt like I really liked that job. So when I found out about this GBJ program or the global business journalism, and it has this, um, it's under actually the journalism and communications department, right? So I felt like it could be a way for me to dive into this um, field that I want to get into. Um, that's really interesting too. Uh, I just also wanted to ask because Shar, you said that you wanted to pursue some sort of like social media manager role. So I was wondering um, what job were you doing prior to coming to GBJ? Were you working full-time employee? Um, that is, I actually don't know the English term, but in Chinese it's called um, Yun Yun, uh, maybe content operations. Mm -hmm. I guess that's the translated version of that. So the content operations, this um, position, it's very broad. Like you can't, you can actually operate a lot of things. So I handled um, all the content of our app because it's an app company. So everything should be localized, everything that they needed to um, or wanted to, let's say, do in that app for my country they need to go through me like if it's is this localized enough so i need to approve everything so i handle one part of the content and then later on i handle um user so it's in chinese it's called uh yonghu yin yin um like user how do you say that in, in english um i feel like you gave a good translation like content user content Content manager, I Something, don't know. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm so sorry. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so then they gave me this uh, user or something, Yin Yin, 
I, I will put the Google Translate it here. Uh, yeah, and then later on, they gave me uh, social media. So at the end of, let's say, last month, um, I was handling three departments and a group of no more than 40 people. And I was managing all of them. Okay, I also wanted to ask, so more about GBJ. So what are your favorite courses so far? We've been in this program for um, over a month now. So that's my question to you. Yeah, five weeks. Those are week yeah. five. Yes, that's over a month. Yeah, um, I guess I would say mass communication. It's because I'm actually not that into the class itself. I'm, I like the way that we could talk freely in the class. Mm -hmm. Like we don't have this um, censorship or <laughs> I don't know if it's the allowed or I'm gonna cut this down later on. <laughs> yeah, but we don't have that um, limitations of um, topics that we can and cannot talk in the class. So that's why I like the class a lot, like because of the different topics and different um, sensitive um, situations that we can talk about in class, yeah. How about you? Um, yeah, for me, I think my favorite course so far is corporate communications because I really enjoy learning about corporate branding, corporate communications, corporate strategy, like that kind of um, area of subject. And I think it's really closely related to PR because we're talking about branding and image and identity for a company. So I feel like I'm learning a lot of useful Im information that I could use like in the future when I apply for internship. Okay, we talk about like our favorite courses, but what are courses that you're looking forward to taking next semester? I think the course that I'm looking forward to the most is the workshop on film and TV production because it's an industry that I don't know much about, but I'm very curious to learn more. And I think it would just be a very fun course to explore a different industry. Yeah, and Shar, what is the course that you're looking forward to the most in the future semesters? Media management. <laughs> it's just because like it's the field that I want to get into, like social media. So I'm actually not sure because I haven't read the things that you're gonna learn in this course, but I'm hoping that it is aligned to what I want to learn, which is like ha how to handle social media. So hence media management, yeah. And Shar, I was also wondering if you experienced any sort of cultural shock ever since you came to China because um, I don't know if you have introduced this part, but you are from the Philippines, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, let me let me think about it and then you could like go ahead first. Yeah, please, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So for me, I feel like um, going to college in America is very different from going to college in China. And I guess one part of cultural shock that I experienced is how um, they have a lot of like regulations at the dorms that I did not really expect to face. Like for example, after 12, p uh, 12 a.m., you will not have hot water in the showers anymore. So we have all learned to kind of like take our showers early, rest up early. And another thing is like sometimes um, you cannot have visitors over after 11 p.m. And also right now it's a little difficult because of the COVID restrictions. It's a, a little bit difficult for you to have visitors who are not Tsinghua students to come visit you. Like it's not allowed at the moment. So these restrictions have been a little bit of a cultural shock to me um, because in America, I feel like at the dorms, people don't really care at my school at least, like we didn't really have restrictions as to who we can bring to our dorm and then how long they can stay and stuff like that. But it's, it's, a, it's just a very interesting uh, difference, yeah. Okay, now that you talked about that, I guess subways, I guess that's the biggest thing that I would say that is very different back from the Philippines is the subway. It's, you can see that if ever I posted it as a video, you can see that I am a woman, <laughs> I am a girl. So whenever you're in the Philippines, like when they see, oh, this is a girl or this is a woman, they, the men there, they would gladly give up their seats for you. Like, automatically. Like, once I enter the subway and they see my bag is so big and it's so heavy, they would, like, I would, I can expect someone, like, would just give up their seat. Like, hey, um, miss, just sit here. But here in China, it's so different because every time, because I carry a big backpack 
every time with me because I like to take everything with me. <laughs> like I, I'm always moving apartments, and no one here in the subway would give up their seats for me, even though I have a big backpack behind me and um, or I'm carrying my two suitcase. So that's one thing. Um, I guess because it, maybe it's because they're so tired because Chinese people are so hardworking and they do a lot of um, working over time, right? So I think it's maybe because of that and I don't want to say anything anymore because I don't want to sound very um, biased towards the Philippines. But yeah, it's just one of the things that I miss the most, like having seats at the subways given to me just because of my gender. <laughs> Yeah, I think um, because I lived in China when I was in middle school and high school. So I feel like based on my experience, people generally uh, definitely give seats to elders and children as uh, along with pregnant women. Like we will definitely like everyone immediately give seats to these people. But perhaps if you're like, uh, just because you're a woman, like they might not give seats to you. But in a different perspective, maybe it's like also there's more equality, like both men and women are the same, like that's a different perspective, yeah. 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 Um, before we move on to our next question, I would like to ask, how is it in America? Yeah, how is it like, mm -hmm. because I've stayed in America and I've never carried huge backpacks in America because I never mm -hmm. needed to, because I, I'm, I don't, I'm not working there and I'm not um, studying there, so I don't need yeah. to carry my laptop everywhere with me. But how is it like living in America? Because, yeah, like I said, back in the Philippines, I can expect like mm -hmm. every time, yeah, it's automatic. I am given a seat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's a little bit different there because also for me, at least like LA, I was living in LA, and we didn't take the. There's not like none of us really took metros. A lot of times, if we go anywhere, we would. Uh, either drive there or we would take ubers which is like uh share rides mm -hmm. and then um so because of that we didn't ride public transportation as much so i didn't really get to see like whether someone would give up their seat for me or not um, but i think in general uh, um, a lot of people are very polite and you know they would open the doors for me and um there's like courteous actions like that i would say like exist in america um, like because we're studying journalism what's your future plan where do you see yourself going or working yeah um, as I stated before I'm very interested in PR so I really want to work at a PR agency as like an account manager and I think basically GBJ can help me get there by helping me improve my writing skills my communication skills and learning more about new media and company branding, etc. So um, that's the current path that I'm heading into. And Shar, I would also like to learn more about your career aspirations and perhaps how GBJ can help you get there. Yeah, I think um, I said it a while ago, like I, I really want to get into this social media manager um, kind of field. I uh, prepared a question like, why did you choose Tsinghua? And uh, my answer to that is that I see Tsinghua Bring me, bringing me to levels of um, different levels that I could not bring myself into because I am actually a self learner. I like to learn everything through online. Let's say um, I learn how to edit a video through YouTube. I learn uh, PR, um, Premiere Pro through YouTube. I learn um, Photoshop through YouTube. So everything that I have learned now, I learn it by myself. But I am like in a situation where I think I could no longer teach myself these stuff. Like I could not teach myself how to communicate better. I could not teach myself how to, let's say, reach certain people in order to increase my followers or a certain followers account by, let's say 10%. I don't know these stuff, right? So I think Tsinghua can help me, at least give me professors that have the knowledge so that I could have this knowledge as well. Very well said. And Shara, do you think you're going to return to your home country after you graduate from the program or do you plan to stay in China to pursue your career aspirations? Very well said. And Shara, do you think you're going to return to your home country after you graduate from the program or do you plan to stay in China to pursue your career aspirations? That is, um, I have been thinking about this question for a while now. Um, but. I think I would like to, or at least I hope to, 
go back to the Philippines for a couple of years, let's say a year or two, so that I would have experience of working there because I have never actually worked in the Philippines, like work work. So I never had this um, corporate experience in, in the Philippines. So I hope that I would um, go back to the Philippines, let's say for a year or two, and then maybe come back here in China. How about, how about you, Cynthia? What's your um, plan? Um, I intend to experience life here in China for two years during the program and then see how I feel about living here, working here, and then deciding then because I think um, I could see myself either in China or America and it would be like both very fulfilling lives so I will wait and see. <laughs> yeah. If I would gun to your head. <laughs> <laughs> Gun to your head. If if you needed to give me an answer to that, gun to your head. Mm -hmm. Like, where are you leaning towards at? China, or mm -hmm. are you planning to go back? Here? Yeah. Well, I think um, a major reason why I came to Tsinghua and GBJ in the first place is because I envisioned myself perhaps working in China. Mm -hmm. So I think right now my plan is, if I had to decide right now, I would say uh, I would want to at least experience a year or two working full-time in China and see how that's like because I feel like um, like Tsinghua has so many great resources and they can really help us like both develop and connect us to um, like opportunities in China so I think that's a very valuable aspect about studying at Tsinghua as well so I definitely want to use that advantage and uh, try to obtain a job in China first and Maybe we'll see where that leads from that point. Yeah. Okay. 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 I'm so sorry for forcing you to answer that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I guess um, last question before we end this um, podcasting or video podcasting. Um, would you like to explain or guess um, how would you explain GBJ to anyone who's watching and they're not a student of GBJ? Yeah, I would say GBJ is a is a program where students are so diverse they come from all different countries and they study different things in their undergraduate career they have different work experiences so everyone really brings something unique to the table and all together you guys will learn more about communications about journalism about corporate strategy and new media and there's just like so many skills that you will take away that will be applicable to any field that you choose to be in. So I think just generally this is a program that really develops your communication skills and um, also gives you new perspectives because people are coming in from different countries and overall you're just gonna have these skills that you can take to accomplish anything that you wish to do. Very well said. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know how can I add or top no. up your, your, your answer. <laughs> so, in, in your eyes, what do you think the GBJ program is and how would you explain it to somebody who is watching? Okay, let's say, um, hopefully this is a Chinese student, so, because like, if you are a foreigner, listen to Cynthia, because Cynthia is, <laughs> Cynthia's answer is like so perfect, and kind of even <laughs> top up the answer. Um, I guess um, for Chinese students, um, if you want to know how to communicate with outside of China, so how to deal with people from, not in China, not Chinese people, you can come to GBJ. And if you are a foreigner, and you want to know how it's like learning journalism in China, you also come to GBJ because we, like Cynthia said, it's so diverse. Like we have Chinese students here. We have people from all over the world. Oh, you have me, Philippines. You have her from America. We also have one um, from Canadian, from Vietnam, from Indonesia. We just met a guy from uh, it Italy. Yes. Yeah. So you see that being in GBJ, it's, it's like your world or your window to the whole world. It's like United Nations here. So if you are from outside of China, if you want to learn journalism, how it's like learning journalism in China, come to GBJ. Yes, very well said as well. I love how you broke down um, how it, a GB, our GBJ program is suitable for all different kinds of people. And I think that's it for our little segment here today. And thank you guys for joining us. Yeah, again, my name is Char. And my name is Cynthia. Bye. Bye.